Hi and welcome back to Cheeky Crypto. My name is Nick and today guys we're going to be jumping down into the world of Bitcoin, taking a look at the recent price action, what's been going on, what we think is likely to happen next and all that wonderful stuff. As I get into this video, if you find it useful and informative, smash that like button. I do appreciate that. If you happen to be new to the channel, then why not go ahead and subscribe, tap the bell, select all the notifications and in doing so, you will be kept up to date with everything that we do here at Cheeky Crypto. If you haven't yet joined us in Discord, guys, you're missing a trick. Check it out. Linked in the description down below. It's a fantastic community talking crypto. 24 7 it's completely free and as i said it's the first place that we go to to notify you of everything that is going on in the crypto space so why not check it out let's jump right down into this one though bitcoin paired up with usdt on the hourly chart and binance is the data source we're going to take a look at two things here today we're going to be taking a look at smart money concepts which is the chart that you see here and the elliott way theory chart which is this one on this side okay so we're going to start here with elliott way theory and just following on from the ama that we had yesterday with our patreon members and youtube members uh, we can of course acknowledge that there's interesting structures that were going on we did hit the higher target that we kind of plotted out last night uh, this one was up in this higher range between 27,100 and 27,500 we actually peaked up here a little bit higher at 27,756 and so it's not terribly too unusual what we're looking for here is to see whether or not uh, we end up with another zigzag pattern and I think that's kind of where my mind is at at the moment I think we might start to see a little bit of an overextension in, in this fifth wave it's not necessarily required, but we could be in a little fourth wave here with a little bit of a push to the upside before we can start to see a bit of a move down. Ultimately, what I'm looking for is I'm looking for something similar to what we saw over here, right? We saw a 535, okay? And what we're looking for is to see whether or not this 535 gets repeated on this side as a double zigzag pattern. A double zigzag pattern uh, would be you know, just corrective, um, but it would be going to the upside. So there could be seeing some significant gains pushing us up into those higher ranges that I was talking about a few days ago around that kind of $32,000, $33,000 range. Now, the more as time progresses here, the more and more likely it is that we are going to hit that range and we're going to go into those higher ranges at $32,000, $33,000. Okay, and that's positive, but it also comes with some pretty bearish macro outlooks as well. So we have to kind of take the positive with the negative. Uh, you can't just always go to the upside, for example, and hitting 32-33K, I think could potentially be a big reversal point for us in terms of BTC. Now, on that note, just talking about macros for a second here, we can see that we have this previous zone. This is between 26,700 and 28,800. This was an area that we rocketed through over here in 2020, right? We pushed through it. We came down, we found support briefly. We then moved up into the all-time, oh, 65K. Then we came down, we tested this area, found it as support, then went up to 69K, came down, found it as support briefly, lost it, and now we're back up here. So the question becomes, is this range actually from previous demand turning into supply? And if it does turn into supply, then we'll be thinking about a rejection point from around 28K, which is a little bit short of that 32, 33K uh, range, okay? So we want to be that bear these things in mind. And from a zigzag pattern, right, it's the B waves that are going to be incredibly difficult to kind of gauge and understand exactly where they're going to go. I'm just going to remove this one off here for a second. Okay, um, the B waves can be pretty much anything. So they're very, very difficult to get a good read on them. Uh, they can be short like this one over here, and sometimes they can be incredibly deep. Okay, so we know that we're likely to finish off this fifth wave over the weekend. Um, and we're likely to start to see a little bit of a cooling off period here for BTC. Now, the other way of kind of looking at this is that it is some kind of one, two, three, four, five. And to do that, we'd have to kind of consider this area here as an impulsive structure, uh, which it does hit. Okay, so we can see this going one, two, three, down into four, and then up into five. So it's also possible that we've got a much bigger five wave play in, in going on here. And if that is the case, then we would expect a much deeper correction. Okay, we'd talk about maybe coming down uh, and overlapping with the $22,600 level, this one here. Okay, and normally you'd have a much bigger three wave count that would look like this uh, and then you would go up again in another five waves right so like i said you can't just continue to go up in these kind of bullish structures without some form of um corrective structure to appear you have to have profits getting taken traders will be taking profits essentially and so prepare yourself for that but if we are doing something like that it would be one two three four and then over here as five don't be at this side we're confused by this little area it is a zigzag we mapped that up last night essentially as a five wave drop right inside there basically five three five so it wasn't 
an expanding flat or a regular flat or a running flat or anything like that. Um, that was me not really paying attention to what was going on just here. A little bit of an unusual C wave, but nonetheless, it is what it is. Um, and I should have caught that one earlier, so apologies on that. But you can see here we do have this potential idea that we're in a fifth, uh, a final fifth wave upwards, and uh, we could see this. Now, if we do have a zigzag pattern, then of course that changes everything. And what we're really doing here is an A, B, and then we go up into that zigzag to make it C. Okay, so we're keeping a close eye on whether or not we get those kind of structures. But for the most part, a lot of people will be wanting to look at this as a trend reversal. If that is the case, and we are now going to be talking about moving up in a significant way, and we're ending in a 53535, five, five, then we're going to have to pull into question whether or not we've got something bigger going on all the way over here as well. Um, ultimately, I think it's not as good as we want it to be, because uh, this could still be 335, three, corrective structure right up into this range. And as I've said many times before, it looks to me like all we're really doing is something to this effect like that. And I think there's actually a um, irregular flat going on in here as well, A, B, and C. You can kind of see it right from here. Uh, down here, we have an A, B, and C structure up here. Then we come down and corrective B wave, and then we potentially have a 335 correction going up here. Or um, it could be a, a really complex with a double zigzag at the end going slightly higher into that kind of 30K range, uh, possibly. But as I said, on our macro time frame here, this is an interesting range, 26 to 28K, that could be rejection for us. So we want to bear those things in mind. So Elliott Wave Theory is actually telling us that we're kind of coming towards an end of a move, but we'll see how the weekend goes we can see a lot of various different things occurring usually you see sideways trading and stuff like that occurring over the weekends low volume as usual uh, so i'm not expecting terribly too much uh, the weekly close is going to be interesting i'll probably talk about that a bit more tomorrow uh, as we kind of go into the end of the weekend and we'll talk about where we think the weekly close needs to be um, if we want to be bullish and if the bears want to take control where they would be looking to kind of get that weekly close position as well now, from a smart money concepts point of view, we are bullish on this one hour chart. We can see that we have a change of characterization uh, going from bearish to bullish. This was confirmed yesterday. Uh, we can see that we have now a break of structure or a CTS moving to the upside. Basically, that just basically means that we are uh, confirming that we're in an upward movement right now. OK, and we can see that there. So on our hourly chart, that's all positive positive. I am concerned about the level of potential manipulation that is occurring right in here. Uh, and the reason for that is we can see all of these little green areas. These are created from imbalances in the order books. These are also commonly known as fair value gaps. Okay, fair value gaps or an imbalance in the order book. What it essentially means is a large buy order, in the case of these being green, came in here and there was no one really actively selling in this little gap. So the price jumped from the low side to the higher side where people were then able to transact or trade with each other. Because you've got to bear in mind one of the fundamental things things that with crypto, with stock market, with everything, is that there's a buyer and that there's a seller. So if you come in here with a huge buy order and there is insufficient sellers, then the price is going to jump to wherever the sellers are, okay? And that seems to be higher in the price chart. So when you see these gaps, you can understand that there's a lot of larger orders occurring in these gaps. And this is usually typically institutional grade money or big funds like big traders, billionaires, millionaires, market makers, and so forth. And so when we see a lot of these stacking up like this it is unnatural and the reason that we say it's unnatural is because when a person comes in with a buy order down at this low end and the price suddenly jumps up here they don't continue buying because they were not able to buy it at the price that they wanted to so normally what they do is they wait for liquidity to come back down into these ranges so when we start seeing all of these gaps start forming like this and they're starting to stack up on each other it does pull into question why are these institutional grade investors or these market makers continuing to push this price to the upside without the liquidity in the ranges where they actually place their buy orders? And then you have to start thinking, okay, well, what is the incentive to push that price up the way that it is going? So at some point, in my opinion, we are going to have to come down here and we are going to fill these gaps, in my opinion, and where liquidity is going to revisit in all of those zones. Now, it's not a guarantee that that happens, but in my opinion, on this hourly chart, there's a high tendency to see that. There's a few that have been left behind on this entire route move to the upside. We can see that they started down here in November 2022. There's one over here, and you can see you can leave the odd one behind. I'm not too fussed about these little odd ones, but I am more concerned when we start seeing them getting stacked up like this. Because 
because this is an indication that there's a lot of liquidity gaps in the order books and price will want to kind of gravitate back down here at some point so we're going to keep an eye on that overall but i was wanting to kind of just point out that yes we're bullish on our hourly chart here but i don't think it's very natural in the way that it has been moving now some other positives right outside of potential manipulation uh, and smart money kind of pushing the market in the direction that they want it to the other positives to bear in mind is that we have a weak high and a strong low so at the moment on this hourly chart we are bullish we're not bearish um it was unfortunate that my short position yesterday got stopped out but yeah it is what it is ultimately i do think that uh, we are going to be moving up on the smaller time frames over the weekend i expect more fomo from retail and all that kind of stuff next week could be a completely different ball game we'll see how that kind of goes Ultimately, uh, from an Elliott Wave theory point of view, we will be looking for a bit of a pull to the downside, maybe around this equilibrium area at some point. And it's quite common that once you have a break of structure, you do retrace a little before you move on up. Some examples uh, of this, and not that I can see any major ones here. We had the change of character, we retraced up break of structure uh, over here. We kind of just traded sideways on that one. Uh, if I come over to uh, here, for example, we had a break of structure, we retraced, and then we had another break of structure. Uh, so we broke uh, a structure over here as well. We retraced, and then we had the break of structure. So uh, usually you kind of see things um, kind of retrace a little bit once you kind of see that. So my expectation will be that at some point we will have this pull to the downside. Whether or not we are going to be in this kind of 53535 with a three wave drop in another 53535 to the upside, maybe push that kind of 32k range. I don't know uh, whether or not we're all going to be corrective in here with and it's going to be a double zigzag or maybe we're going to just leave it here as a 335, right? Uh, we're going to keep a close eye on all of those things. But from smart money concepts, I do think we are bullish, at least on the smaller time frame. And uh, we could potentially be looking at some fantastic trading opportunities. If you are actively trading, then why not check out BitGet linked in the description down below. Uh, we are running competitions with BitGet directly in our Discord server. So if you are a trader, you can take part in those where you can win uh, up to $100 USDT uh, every single week. Um, if you have the best ROI uh, in the competition, right, and it's percentage ROI, so it's not dollar value or anything like that. If you get the best percentage, uh, then you'll be able to to take the top prize. Um, and there's also some fantastic sign up offers with BitGet as well. Now, just to kind of crush some of the uh, nonsense that you hear in the space, we do not get. Um, commission for liquidations or anything like that uh, that's not how BitGet works no we're not we're not really uh, into that kind of stuff but we uh, we do like BitGet because they don't operate in that particular way uh, basically um yeah that's it if you want to know more join us in discord we can, we can talk about it more down there if you're interested in that kind of stuff i'm gonna leave the video right there if you found it useful in the form to smash that like button i do appreciate that if you're new to the channel subscribe and uh, i'll catch you all in the next one